Good morning, family. My name is Jamel Agustin, and I'm the director of discipleship and life groups here at NBCC. I am excited to kick off the God Who Sees message series today. Thank you to all of you that are joining us online, and a huge shout out to our San Jose campus. Make some noise. Let's go. Good morning, guys. Uh, Today, we're going to spend some time looking at Jesus and how he sees the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4, verses 1 through 14. This message is entitled, Who? Me? Let's look at the text. Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually, he came to a Samaritan village called Sakar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you were speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Let's pray. God, I thank you for your word that speaks life to us. We ask that you have your way, that you will arise in in these moments together. We love you, we trust you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So I come from a family that loves to gather around food, especially on Sundays after church. My grandma is the best chef that I know. (laughs) But over the years, she's like, hey, I need you guys to pitch in. So I want you, 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 and you to bring a dish. For some reason, she never asked me to bring a dish. And I don't know if it's because uh, she thinks that I can't cook or that I I don't cook, but she never asked me. But I remember one Saturday in preparation to Sunday, she turned to me and she said, hey, bring a salad. And I was like, who, me? Like, you're talking to me? We've been together gathering on Sundays all the time, and you've never asked me to bring anything. You're talking to me? I was in shock. And I wonder if... The Samaritan woman had this question in her mind when Jesus spoke to her. In their culture, women were inferior to men, and there was a cultural and racial stigma between Samaritans and Jews. Samaritan and Jews had a common ancestry, but centuries before uh, this conversation between she and Jesus takes place, the Samaritans were taken captive by Assyrians, and since then they had been intermingled. So the Jews considered Samaritans as half-breeds, and the Samaritans believed that their worship was the true ancient religion. So there was some tension there. Can you feel it? So this Samaritan woman is heading to the well to draw water, and a Jewish man, Jesus, is out in the open asking something of her. And I can't help but wonder if she's thinking in her head, like, me? You're talking to me? We see this reflected through scripture. Like Moses, while he was tending to his father's flock, God calls Moses to lead his people out of Egypt. Moses was probably like, me? (laughs) What about Jeremiah? God called him to be the prophet of the nations. And Jeremiah's like, my speech isn't that good. Are you sure you're talking to me? Me? And even Sarah 
Sarah laughed when she heard God's promise that she would birth a son at like 90, 91 years old. Sarah had to be like, who, me? I believe that this response flows from our inability to see. We're blinded by our uncertainty. We're blinded by insecurities. And whether you're starting this journey of faith or you've been on it for a while, at some point you might find yourself asking, who, me? But there's good news. God is the God who sees. Nothing is unnoticed by God. He sees where you are, who you are, and your true need. Let's check this out in the text together. God sees where you are. The increasingly popularity of Jesus calls him to leave Judea to Galilee. And despite unpopular opinion, Jesus decides to go to, through Samaria. And remember that there's this stigma amongst Jews and Samaritans so much that Jews would avoid traveling through Samaria. Don't we do that sometimes? Like we avoid certain spaces and places, different parts of town, because we don't want to run into people that are different from us. They think differently than we do. They may vote differently than we do. They might have a different lifestyle than us. But we see Jesus. He decides to travel through Samaria. And this is a scope of God's love. God sent Jesus to dwell among us, to come near people, to heal, to save, to redeem, to set people free. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. The scripture doesn't say God so loved this or that people group exclusively. No, it didn't say that. It didn't say God so loved everyone that falls under this tax bracket. No, it says God so loved the what? The world. We don't know much about this woman, but there are a few things that we can glean from this passage. She and Jesus were at the well around noontime. According to history, it was customary for women to get up early in the morning and draw water. So we may ask, why is this woman heading to the well at the most sweltering part of the day and she's doing it alone? This most likely has to do with the things that she encountered in her life that caused more uh, moral issues than she wanted and, and created a separation between she and other women. This woman goes alone because she is alone. She goes out in this aloneness, taking on the identity of an outcast and adopting the it is what it is mentality. Have you been there? not physically in Samaria, but spiritually, you find yourself in a pit of despair. And you've been there so long that you feel like there's no way out and you become numb to the situation and accept that this is your reality, taking on the mentality that it is what it is. Oh, but there is a God who sees and he's coming near to you. We're never too far from God. Second point, God sees who you are. Look how Jesus initiates conversation with this woman. He says to her, please give me a drink. Now, I can't lie, when I was reading this, I was like, he couldn't say good afternoon, hello. And I understand, like, it's a different time, culture, and all that, but imagine today you're thirsty, you're at a park at the, at the job, you know, workplace, and you're going to go fill up your water bottle. And there's somebody hanging around the water dispenser, and they're like, I thirst, please give me a drink. <laughs> it's kind of weird. But apparently at this time, it wasn't uncommon for people to ask for a drink at the well. But it was uncommon for a Jewish man and a Samaritan woman to be alone speaking together. 
I believe that Jesus had an understanding or knowledge of this woman prior to speaking to her that played a part in the way he approached her. After all, he is the God who sees. Jesus is on a mission, moving with intention, and he's asking something from her. He's requesting a drink, but I don't think it's because he's dehydrated. In this request, we're seeing God's kingdom breaking through cultural and social barriers that has kept her from seeing her true identity and experiencing the life God had intended. Jesus treats her the way he sees her. Brothers and sisters, God sees us in a way that we don't see ourselves. God uses these requests. He calls us as an invitation for us to grow and live life as the men and women he has created us to be that we don't yet see. We respond, who, me? Because we don't see. Sometimes we're blinded by our shortcomings We feel unworthy or unqualified, and Jesus is asking something of her that she culturally cannot fulfill, but Jesus sees her differently. He sees her with dignity, and he acknowledges her presence. God sees who you are. God sees our need. A woman's work often revolved around water, water for drinking, cooking, washing, She couldn't just go and turn on the faucet and get some water, right? This woman went out by herself midday to draw water she needed for everyday tasks and maintaining her home. She needs this water. Even though she has to go alone, she needs this water. She has to endure the scorching sun, but she needs this water. She's well-prepared, water jar, ready to draw water from Jacob's well. And I bet she didn't expect to hear about this living water. In Hebrew, living water has to do with a spring from the ground that is fresh and flowing. Jesus is fully capable of providing this. And what does he do? He meets her in the place of her need, her true need, her true longing, her thirst is for the living God. Yes, Jesus can provide her with living water, so he offers her himself, a spring of love, joy, peace, freedom, help, and comfort. With this water, she can become spiritually alive. Life often offers us fulfillment through work, money, fame, status, food, pleasure, romance, promising to fulfill us, but those brooks, they dry up. Those wells eventually run dry. We search for this fulfillment in temporal things. St. Augustine says in his confessions, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, in our heart, is restless until it finds rest in you. We have a thirst in us that only God can satisfy. God sees where you are, who you are, and your true need. You may feel isolated or disconnected from people, but you're never far from God. God is concerned about you. He is pursuing you and he sees us. He shows up in in the moments when we've given up hope or we feel unreachable. And I'm reminded of the words in Psalm 139. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. We're never too far from God. God sees us at our core. God is God of the oppressed and he's close to the brokenhearted. And all the more, he sees you as his treasured possession. Who, me? Yes, you. Someone that has a past that can't get past. Me? Yes, you. Why not you? Do you know that you're God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works? Who, me? Yes, you. Even as you deal with your doubt. Yes, you. Let's be real. 
Sometimes we don't like the idea of being seen because we're ashamed. We're embarrassed, we're guilty by our past and our current situations. And as we draw closer to God and his word, he will reveal things about us that don't look too, too good. They don't look perfect, right? His word shines on our imperfections, but it also snatches our blindfolds, revealing to us what God sees. We didn't touch on the verses today, but if you look further in the text, you'll see that Jesus asks this woman about her husband. And she responds, I have no husband. Jesus says, you're right, you've had five, and the one you're with now is not your husband. It's like, wow. But notice that Jesus doesn't condemn her. They keep talking, and without realizing it, she has drunk the living water, and it's having an effect on her. She begins asking questions about where to worship, and Jesus reveals to her that he is the Messiah, the Messiah that she's been waiting for, the Messiah that she's been longing for. She drops her water jars, and she goes from being a skeptic to a witness. And she says, as she runs in John 4, 29, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. The living water springing up in her causes her to be a witness in Samaria. Her witness is, he knew all about me. He sees me. She came to this well feeling ignored, feeling invisible, but she left seen by God. We have this Explore God campaign coming this fall and you may have saw you've seen the video and your response was probably who me you want me to do what facilitate let me leave you with this we're all in need of living water God sees all hearts he sees all people in all places. He knows everything about us and he desires to come closer. God wants to engage with us in our questions, just like he did with the woman at the well. God sees you. Who, me? Yes, you. <laughs>